the wicked are overthrown and are not. But the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. But he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. But the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Recompense is dealing with your work, what you do. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. We'll come back to that. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The hand of the diligent the hand of the diligent 
shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness is in the heart of man. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that he, with that which he took in hunting. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. Let's hear it out of a, another translation. He who loves knowledge loves discipline. <laughs> but he who hates correction is a bore. A good man obtains Yah's favor, but the schemer his condemnation. No one is made secure by wickedness. Let me read that again. No one is made secure by wickedness, but the roots of the righteous will never be moved. A capable wife is a crown for her husband, but a shameful one is like rot in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the schemes of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are a deadly ambush but the speech of the upright rescues them. The words of the wicked are a deadly ambush, but the speech of the upright rescues them. Once the wicked are down, it's the end of them, but the house of the upright endures. A person wins praise in keeping with his common sense. <laughs> but a person with a warped mind is treated with contempt. Let me read that again. A person wins praise in keeping with his common sense. But a person with a warped mind is treated with contempt. Better to be despised and have a servant than to boast of one status but have nothing to eat. A righteous man takes care of his animal, but the wicked, even his compassion, is cruel. The wicked have compassion. But the Most High says it's cruel. That's interesting. He who farms his land will have plenty of food. But he who follows futilities has no sense. Not C E N T S. S-E-N-S-E. -E. The wicked covet the loot of evil men, but the root of the righteous 
give forth of itself. The wicked is trapped by his own sinful speech, but the righteous finds a way out of trouble. One can be filled with good as the result of one's words. And one gets the reward of one's deeds deserve. I'm going to read that again. One can be filled with good as the result of one's words. And one gets the reward one's deeds deserve. <laughs> and one gets the reward one's deeds deserve. <laughs> Fools suppose their way is straight. Let me read that again. Fools suppose their way is straight. But the wise pay attention to advice. A fool's anger is known at once. But a cautious person, slighted, conceals his feelings. Let me read that again. A fool's anger is known at once. A fool's anger is known at once. But a cautious person slighted conceals his feelings. He who tells the truth furthers justice but a false witness furthers deceit. Idle talk can pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise can heal. Truthful words will stand forever. Lying speech and lying speeches, <laughs> I added that lying speeches, lying speech but a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil. But for those advising peace, there is joy. No harm can come to the righteous, but the wicked are overwhelmed with disaster. Lying lips are an abomination to Yah, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. Listen again, a cautious person conceals knowledge, but the heart of a fool blurts out folly. The diligent will rule, the diligent will rule, the diligent will rule, while the lazy will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in a person's heart weighs him down, but a kind word cheers him up. The righteous guides his friend's way rightly, but the way of the wicked will lead them astray. A lazy man doesn't roast what he hunted, but when a man is diligent, 
His wealth is precious. In the road of righteousness is life. No death is in its pathway. Now we know that uh, Solomon gets uh, the lion's share of credit for having uh, supplied proverb. And uh, in looking over his life, I mean, all of us, if you've been going to church for a couple of weeks, you've heard something about Solomon and how, uh, you know, as a youngster, the Most High came to him and asked him, and we all know the story. He, he didn't ask for the latest game or whatever. He said, hey, give me wisdom, give me knowledge as to how to deal with so great a people. And we know what the Most High uh, reportedly uh, said to him was like, hey, you could have asked for a lot of things, but you asked for wisdom, but because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to add everything. And uh, he was well off, we all know that. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he, he lived life large. And uh, he tried to have peace while he was king. And uh, for the most part, he, uh, it appears he, he pleased the Most High now. You know, some scholars say, you know, later on he, uh, some of them try to intimate that he kind of lost favor. Uh, you research that out for yourself. Uh, because of some of the uh, marriages and arrangements that he had. But, you know, I, I will say this, some of his, uh, Marriages were for peace. Because, you know, if you were married to somebody's daughter, they're not going to go to war with you. So it wasn't so much that he, you know, he had a disease, uh, you know, but uh, it was what it was. Going back to uh, King James Version, and it says, Whoso loveth instruction, love of knowledge, but he that hateth reproof, and it says is brutish. And then um, uh, in my Thomas Nelson Bible, and you know, when I said uh, research, the researchers, I look at who the publishing company was, <laughs> I look at everything. But I, I thought it was interesting because, uh, you know, I use a word a lot, um, and um, I'm sure it does not uh, always please the uh, head of this house. But uh, in brutish, it says brutish. But guess what they have down uh, in uh, italics? They have the word stupid. And I, you know, I know a lot of folks probably wanted to punch me in my face because I've told you all, and I still stand by that. Don't follow stupid people. But I didn't use, I, I used that word before I saw this. <laughs> now, now what I'm trying to say is, when you're studying, 
look at everything. You know, in, in fact, I, I, I would like to encourage you this morning. Uh, some of us need to revamp the way we even study. Because we should be growing not only in knowledge, not only in wisdom, but in maturity. You know, if we're, if we're living the same way that we lived 40, 50 years ago, what are you studying? Proverbs is full of counsel that we can use today, that we can use right now, that we need right now. Mm. Mm. A good man obtains Yah's favor, but the schemer his condemnation. See, it's a lot of scheming, a lot of plotting, a lot of planning going on right now. And, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we don't concern ourselves with it. And, uh, that could prove to be uh, detrimental to you. I'm not here to uh, spread fear. But let, me, let me share something with you about fear. Because that's, that's an emotion. And believe it or not, you do get fear from the one that made you. Fear has its place. Now, <laughs> this goes against what church folk have been taught. But sometimes sudden fear comes upon you because you need to stop immediately what you're doing. Sometimes you need to stop immediately what you're thinking. And here's the real kicker. Sometimes you need to stop what you're scheming. That's the most high trying to tell you, son, daughter, don't do that. See, we've been taught, you know, because uh, particularly in the, um, what is it, the charismatic evangelical movement, you know, if you're in faith, you ain't got fear. Not so. Study. Study. Everything that's in creation was made by the one that put us together. And it's our job to find out how it's to be used properly. Nothing is for waste. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes fear makes you cautious. And you should be. Sometimes not heeding fear will cause you to do or say something foolish. 
And see, now more than ever, most of us really, we don't want to hurt anybody. I, 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 I believe that most of us really don't want to hurt anybody. But a lot of things that we're doing and a lot of things that we're saying You bring a damage to people's lives. And you're not even aware of it. No one is made secure by wickedness. But the roots of the righteous will never be moved. The words of the wicked are a deadly ambush, but the speech of the upright rescues them. Once the wicked are down, it's the end of them, but the house of the upright endures. But, you know, in, in what we were hearing and listening to this morning, Brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean that the righteous won't have trouble. This thing about, you know, hey, I'm bulletproof. No, you're not. No, you're not. Not yet you're not. <laughs> The change or the transformation has not occurred yet. You're not bulletproof. And when you mistake faith for being reckless, we will all suffer the consequences of our reckless actions. Most of us that have been going here a while, we all know about the, you know, fiery furnace, you know, and the three Hebrew boys, but, you know, Abraham had a fiery furnace test as well. And uh, one of his relatives, after he saw Abraham come through, <laughs> said, hey, I believe like my relative Abraham. And he went running in that fiery furnace. Now, he thought he was doing something in faith, particularly the kind of faith that the charismatic movement teach. You know what happened to him? He didn't come out. And you know, I don't know, was he afraid when he did it? I don't know. Was there fear present? I don't know. I wasn't there. Pastor said he was not a believer. To which I would ask, According to who was he not a believer? If he said, I believe in the God that Abraham believed in, again, the charismatic genre teaches that if a person said they're a believer, who are we to say they're not? I'm not arguing, I'm just, this, is, this comes from study. This comes from study. I'm not arguing. 
I yield to the senior pastor of the house. I'm just kind of putting that out there also. Candidates, and then I'm going to move on. Some candidates will tell you, I'm a believer. And again, some of us will say, well, if that's what he said, then that's what he is. Uh, see, I, guys, <sighs> folks, we got to study for real. And again, I'm not, I'm not arguing. <laughs> I'm not arguing. I'm, I'm, I'm not. But I, I. I Again, now in his mind, that man might have thought he was exercising his faith, depending on how faith was taught to him. Same way we were taught about fear. You know, I, I can remember, I heard it, I'm not saying in here, but I've heard it, that you know, fear is of the devil. Now, that's what I've heard. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about, hey. Folks, and you know, I'm not being nitpicky because my life is on the line. And whether you know it or not, and whether you think you bulletproof or not, yours is too. Mm. And I'm not trying to pick a fight with no branch of Zion. Okay, I, I just want that clear. I'm here, I want to live. And all of you that want to live, I want you to live too. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Here's another one, and this one is, is, is for us today. Better to be despised and have a servant than to boast of one's status but have nothing to eat. When I was in my element in the business world, and I enjoyed it. And I know, you know, you know, he's, you know, well, it is what it is. Ain't no need of me trying to change it because, you know, I'm standing in church. I enjoyed doing business. I, I tried to not cheat anybody, but I also tried not to get cheated. I wasn't always successful. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. This says here, it says, better to be, Better to be despised and have a servant than to boast of one status and have nothing to eat. Well, uh, in the insurance industry, among the marketing people, they are the people that go out and make their particular company the best thing since sliced bread. They give you a company car, expense account, and all that, and they want you to dress real nice and brush your teeth and smile because you're selling the company. Well, among, among the marketers, there was all, they, the company would always want to have contests where you compete. Who can bring in the most business? And uh, you know, if we're not careful, there's some pretty uh, marketing people uh, can be pretty prideful. They can be. They they'll think they the cat's meow. We can be that way. 
I'm not in it anymore, but we can be that way. Get to what I'm, the point I'm making. There was uh, one gentleman, and he's still in the industry, and he's doing well. But uh, sometimes we would go to lunch, and this guy, man, I mean, you talk about dress nice. Man, he was wearing $1,500 suits back in the day. And I couldn't keep up with him, and I had a clothing store. None of my suits cost $1,500. But we would go out to lunch together. Now, when, we, when, marketing, when the marketing guys go out, when you're going out to lunch by yourself, you can't spend the company's money. The best way to spend the company's money is to take an agent out to lunch. But we didn't do that. We went out. And I kept noticing, we would go out and everything, and when it come time to pay, hey, can you get this? You know, and I, I, yeah, hey, and no, no biggie, you know, because, but after a while, I began to realize, wait a minute now. And I said to him, the, the last time I paid, I said, man, you sitting in here with a $2,000 suit on, and you don't have you know, $15 to pay for lunch? See, marketers sell image. Y'all ever seen anybody like that? Marketers are the ones that brought up what now everybody's using. You all have heard the term branding. Well, that's what marketing is. Marketing is branding. And some people have gotten very, very rich off of branding. Everybody now is promoting themselves, the athletes, the entertainers the politicians, the preachers, not so much the rabbis. The rabbis that are into the way we learn, they do that too. But the others, no. No, they don't. Some professors. And the thing you need to watch about people that do a lot of branding, they are always talking about themselves. Now, they may say, you know, my, uh, my curriculum, if they're a preacher, uh, my ministry, but there's a word that goes before whatever it is, my, 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 watch that. Watch that. Watch that. Are you following a brand? Or are you following the most high? Think, think about that. It's so much branding going on that we don't even realize it. Movements are brands, too. Mm, mm, mm. 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 And, and this one. It says, a righteous man takes care of his animal, but the wicked and this really, this just blew me away. It says, even his compassion is cruel. So saints, think about what that's saying. It's not saying that wicked people can't be compassionate. They may show compassion. 
And when you catch them red-handed sometimes, you gonna see a whole lot of tears. I'm so misunderstood. I didn't mean to fake. Fake. I repent, fake. Fake. Listen at this, particularly the men. He who farms his land will have plenty of food. But he who follows futilities has no sense. If you following somebody that's b b selling their brand, it's going to be unfruitful for you. You want to know what so-and-so is saying? Scrap that. Go to the one that made you. What can another part of creation tell you <laughs> they guessing like you mm. hmm. he who farms his land will have plenty of food but he who follows futilities has no sense Oh, listen to this. The wicked covet the loot of evil men. Now, for a lot of us, for the way we've been taught, we could substitute evil for rich because we think all rich people are evil. Now, I don't know how they're able to square that away when a whole lot of folk, again, that have made claims while they're branding, they living pretty good too. Are they, are they evil? Something to think about. All wealthy people are not evil. All poor people are not righteous. Ah, listen, oh, and this one. The wicked is trapped by his own sinful speech. But the righteous finds a way out of trouble. Did you hear that? It said the righteous finds a way out of trouble. But let's go one step further. What is that also saying? Bulletproof people. That's also telling you that the righteous get in trouble. <laughs> you can't get out of what you didn't get into. Are you listening? Bulletproof people. We are not bulletproof. And I'm not, when I use the term bulletproof, I'm not talking about somebody literally shooting you. But a lot of us are under the assumption that nothing's going to happen to me. I pray you're right, but guess what? That ain't up to you. That's up to the one that made you. Every one of us got an expiration date. We just don't know when it is. And no, I'm not again. I'm not promoting fear. 
I'm just trying to inform you so that you can make quality decisions for your life and in your life because we're all connected either directly or indirectly. Some of us don't like the connections we got, but it ain't a whole lot you can do about it. You just got to keep living. One can be filled with good as the result of one's words. And one gets the reward one's deeds deserve. Let's break that down a little bit. Good can come to you based on what comes out of your mouth. But you might have to settle up for your deeds. Even the deeds you think you pulled off and got away with that one. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. See, there's more being said here than just what's on the, on the page, saints. And see, in your study, let that stuff start marinating. Stop just reading, reading. See spot run, see spot run, see spot run. Run spot C. See, learn how to break that thing down some more because it's, now I'm gonna use some church talk, because it's pregnant with revelation. Correction is present, is pregnant with the most high's wisdom. Again, I'm not picking a fight. We need wisdom every day. Every day. Every day. When you pray, when you sleep, when you're in the bathroom, when you're cutting your grass, when you're taking out the trash, when you're complaining, when you're arguing with one another. See, because if you got the right kind of wisdom, it'll cut down on some of the disagreements. Then you don't have to come in here and look like everything's lovely. And then sad when it's time to go back home. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. One can be filled with good as the result of one's words, and one gets the reward of one's deeds. One and one gets the reward. One's deeds deserve. Again, the way we've been taught, well, I'll just repent, and I'll be sincere in my repentance, and I'll have a contrite heart. All of this, that's legit. But you still will have to deal with the consequences of your deeds. I didn't say it. 
It's in the book of wisdom. I'm just repeating it. And I adhere to it. And it helps me daily to remember that. Boy, you get in your feelings and you, 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 you say something wrong. All right? And then you get so angry, then you do something stupid. That person might forgive you. But what damage did you do? You know, church folk, you know, we, I, I'm, I'm going to stay right here for just a second. God, four minutes. Listen. We have repented to one another so many times. When are we going to do the rest of it? See, I don't have but four minutes, so that's good. Y'all, I wish he heard me. Get up. I got four minutes. I'm going to take them all. Listen. We, as a congregation, a Adar, a Kahal, or whatever you want to call it, we have got to reestablish trust. We're not going to move forward very fast when there's no trust. I shouldn't say no when there's low trust, because there is some trust. You wouldn't be here if you had no trust. So there's a, there's a measure of trust. But this, this thing about repenting, if it's not real, it's just words. And listen, you might even feel good for a minute. And you might shed some tears. But did you take it out all the way? If your deed or your word caused a lot of damage, did you try to mitigate the damage or did you just take the church way out? I repented. Now get out of my face. Hey, people laugh, but see, that's how legalistic we are. See, we think I repented. That's it. I'm, I'm off the hook. Study. Study. Two minutes. If Greg Green give me $100, I asked him to, that I, I, I wanted to borrow $100 from him. I said borrow. I was just asking for it, but I said borrow in this example. And Greg give me the $100. And I don't, real, I don't pay Greg back. Wait, 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 wait. Now, Greg might forgive me. You don't have to answer that today. He, see, he might forgive me because, you know, maybe I'm in church and Pastor Green really was, was ding-donging on something. I was like, oh, Lord, I'm under conviction. And that, and <laughs> oh, Greg, I need to see you out in the vestibule. And I said, bro, you know, I, I know I, you know, I asked you for that hundred dollars, man, and I know I've been ducking you, and yeah, I have been ducking you. Will you forgive me? Now, Greg, I said, well, hey, man, you know, we're brothers in the Lord and all, and well, of course, Barry, I forgive you because see, I took so long to not pay him back. He probably is like, just. Wrote that off. 
a lot of you have written stuff off that folks right here in this house have gotten from you, and you just wrote it off. I know I have. Now, in my repenting to Greg, and he forgave me, Now, I was motivated by what I heard the pastor teaching about, and it moved me to do something. And so I went, and because I learned that when you do something wrong, repent for it, and it's going to be all right. Because I also know that if I have wronged a brother, the Bible say they got to forgive me. I'm trying to connect some stuff for you here. Now, most church folk would say, well, Barry did the right thing. He went, he, he, he repented. Man, he was crying and, oh, man, he was under such conviction. Oh, I could see it all over him. Listen, if I didn't reach in my pocket and get that brother his $100 back, my repenting to him wasn't worth 15 cents. Now, I didn't, listen, now this, I, I really mean, and I'm going to sit down. I didn't say what I said. If anybody's in here and if y'all have squash that thing, and you can pay them back, you do that. But as far as me, you don't have to do that. We good. See, I didn't say that to try to bring something back to myself. I'm telling you, trust is low because we have tricked one another. And for the things that we got to deal with, we need to be as best unified as we can. Because see, some of y'all want to go to war. Not me, but that's all right. We got to be more transparent and stop doing a lot of church stuff because that's what has created an atmosphere where the trust is low. So when your brother or sister say something to you, you're wondering in your heart, are they real? Are they sincere? And then even in your forgiveness, is that authentic? Because if you've forgiven a person, what's that cringe in your stomach when you see them? See, I'm, I'm being real now. I'm being real. If you've forgiven a person for something, <laughs> what is it that you, why do you get that reaction that you get when you see them? Okay, because did you forgive them in faith? <laughs> did they repent in faith? God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. And, and, and folks, please, stay safe. Stay with the most high. And pastor, would you come?